What's up gamers, Aaron Shack here, and I'm here with the best ready or not controller support guide here. There is no official controller support in the game as of publishing of this video, but I believe that my personal layout that I've created on Steam is the best one available, and you'll see why. Now, I want you to pay very close attention. I have descriptions of the layout and how everything works in the description down below. I will explain it in depth in this video, and you need to make sure that you understand how all the buttons work, how the mappings work, so that you won't have issues and have complaints and questions and all sorts of problems. If you understand how everything works up front and then spend some time experimenting with it in the game and learning it, then you won't have as many issues. And if you do have questions or concerns, I'll be able to address those. But it's much easier if you already have this understanding with you. So keep in mind, I want to educate you as much as possible and I want this to be successful for both you and for me. So once again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you find this educational or valuable. I make a lot of controller support guides and I play a lot of video games on this channel and I love to share my passion of gaming. So let's get into it. Okay, so now to dive in deeper to the controls. Uh, left stick is to move. You click the left stick and you lean left. You click the right stick you lean right. I have it set to toggle. I went into the menu to do that instead of having to hold it. Um, so you can simply open up the pause menu and go into options. Controls. And basically I switched the, the toggle crouch um, from walk to toggle walk. Um, the lean, I changed it from lean left and right to toggle because I, I just don't think it's an enjoyable experience to continue to hold down the left stick while moving or trying to do anything else or the same. Like if you're trying to aim while you're also clicking and holding down the right stick to lean right, like that doesn't make sense to me. That makes the game more difficult. So yeah, some very important changes there to make at the front. Um, so that's why I say you need to pay attention to what I'm telling you here because I'm going to save you a little bit of hassle and try to make things make sense here. Okay, um, the right stick also functions as a mouse when you're in Drop the menus. The so when you're in the pause menu, there you go. That's your right stick. You pull the right trigger to select whatever option you've highlighted. There you go. Um, left trigger is to aim. Right trigger fires your weapon um a is to interact or yell for compliance get down i want to see hands oh so, that works um b is to crouch now if you this is your regular walking speed but if you hold b and then you let go of it it toggles the auto walk so you walk like super slow super quietly all you have to do is hold b to untoggle that and then you'll be back to regular walking speed. Um, X is to reload your mag, like so. Now if you hold X, you can check the magazine, how much ammo you have, all that. Um, you can press the Y button to switch between your weapons. There you go. It's also used to ready up when you're at the, at the briefing table. Uh, okay, now we're getting into some trickier stuff. The D-pad. I wanted to have a simple way that you could access all your gadgets without having to touch your mouse and keyboard. So, up on the D-pad does your laser and flashlight. If you hold up, it does your night vision goggles. So just holding the button will toggle that. Okay? Um, down on the D-pad will pull up your long tactical device, uh, which is usually... You know, the breach shotgun, the uh, mirror wand, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, if you hold down on the D-pad, you'll get out your zip ties. So whatever's mapped there, you, you will get that out. Um, left on the D-pad toggles the fire rate of your weapon. So right now it's on single shot. Now it's on full auto. Now it's back to single shot. Very simple, right? Okay, now the other thing. If you hold down left on the D-pad... That uses your canned sight. And then you just hold it to bring it right back up, okay? So now right on the D-pad, it's out your grenade, whatever tactical 
you have there. If you hold right on the D-pad, this is getting out the C2 here, but whatever you have equipped there, um, you'll be able to get that out. So all that makes a lot of sense to me. It, it kind of takes a little bit of time to just get adjusted. You know, at first you may be pressing one button expecting to equip a certain gadget, but it makes a lot of sense to have certain things attached to certain mappings here. Okay. So now we're going to get into to the nitty gritty stuff. And I have to tell you, you must pay very close attention, get used to this, give yourself some time to practice because it does take a minute to learn how to issue commands. Because there is no official controller support in this game, I wanted to come up with a way that I could still be able to command my groups of, of uh, teammates here. So what you have to do, absolutely have to do, you must hold left bumper and continue to hold the All left teams. bumper, okay? Otherwise, the command menu, none of these actions will activate. But now you're seeing the numbered menu, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? And on mouse and keyboard, you would just press one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever command you want to issue, right? So I had to think, how is there a way that this would make sense on the controller? Well, what I did was I mapped it out like a clock, with up on the D-pad being 12 o'clock, right on the D-pad is 3 o'clock, down on the D-pad is 6 o'clock, left on the D-pad is 9 o'clock. And then same thing for Y, B, A, and X. So command number one is mapped to up on the D-pad. Command number two at 3 o'clock is mapped to right on the D-pad. Command number three is mapped to 6 o'clock which is down on the D-pad. Command number four is mapped to left on the D-pad. That is nine o'clock, right? Left on the D-pad. Okay, then for commands five, six, seven, and eight, you have command five is Y, command six is B, command seven is A, and command eight is X. Now this clockwise thing will sort of train your brain to think about these numbers very quickly without having to think about it. You'll just see four and you'll just know okay, that's going to be left on the D-pad, right? Like, eventually, that's going to kick in. And it won't take long because we're used to looking at clocks. We're used to thinking about numbers and stuff in clockwise order. So this makes sense to me. So 1 through 4 is on the D-pad. 5 through 8 is over here. But you have to continue holding that left bumper down if you want to be able to have these commands actually go through. So let's tell our guys real quick. Let's just tell them to move somewhere. So move two is one. So one was what? It was up on the D-pad. Moving out. So I told him. Okay, so now holding left bumper. Stay on me. I'm with you. Holding left bumper again. Um, I can bring up the menu. And there's more things we can do. By pressing right bumper while keeping left bumper held, we're able to switch teams. So we can tell blue team. Over there. Go over there. And, okay, red team's still on me. And I could do the same thing. Hold left bumper. Click that right bumper again. Now I'm commanding red team. There, move. Let's just tell him move. to go over here. Hold left bumper. Our right bumper again. And then I can issue them other commands. Now, the other thing that they have is the option to queue commands. And so in order to queue commands... You keep the left bumper held, and you press the back or select button on your controller, and you notice on screen, now it says queuing. So it is going to queue this command, which means it's not going to issue the command immediately, because sometimes you might want to say, guide one team to do something, another team to do something else, and then, and then command them to do it at the same time, so that your team can pull off multiple maneuvers very quickly and strategically. So I'm going to tell both teams to move right here, but I'm queuing the command. So keep that, that uh, back or select button held. I'm going to do up on the D-pad. Boom. Okay, so now, now I do up to execute. I'm going. Like so. And so now at my command, they have done as they are told. Now, if you want to quickly uh, do a command like it says here in the bottom right corner, uh, the default commands, which are contextual, you know, you can look at the guys and have them report something to you. 
Um, Provide support on you can simply track. just press LB to have them fall in. Uh, if you're looking at a door, it might give them, you know, certain default contextual commands. So yeah, just a quick tap of the left bumper will do that, whereas holding it brings up the command menu. So when commands get a little trickier, like if we tell them to fall in, yeah, now we got the numbers one through four, right? Provide support on your six. So I can do that. Um, if I want to do cover, that's uh, down on the D-pad. There you go. If I want them to hold, it's left Wait. on the D-pad. So all of this works really well. Okay, so just keep in mind, you have to continue to hold left bumper. Otherwise, I'll show you what happens if you don't. If you let go of left bumper, it's going to remember what the D-pad does. Yeah, it's going to remember what the D-pad does when you're not holding the left bumper. Okay. Fall in behind me. I got you. On my six. I got you. And kind of same for your, your keys there. So I thought it was easier this way because I tried doing it where the menu only activates when you tap it. And we had all sorts of horrible errors on that front. So uh, I found this to be the easiest way to do that stuff. Right bumper uh, is to melee or throw. Um, so you can just press it once to do a melee. If you hold right bumper, it's going to quickly equip your grenade, and you can toss it. Um, pressing the start button out. drops a chem light. If you hold the start button, it pauses the game. Of course, holding it will unpause the game. Now, the selector back button will do the cams if you tap it once. So now the cams uh, for each of my teammates are up there. You can continue the toggle cams by pressing the back button more and more. Okay, and then um, for the tablet, which you'll need to check your objectives and stuff, you just hold the select or back button, and he opens the tablet. And then once again, you're going to use right stick as your mouse, and then you click the right stick to select whatever you need to select, right? And there you go. Like so. And you can just toggle through that. Those are the control mappings that I have. Um, I also have a written description of this in the description down below. Um, you can also find this layout on Steam and download it. But make sure that you read these directions. Watch this video and make sure that you understand everything. And if you found this uh, helpful or informative, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because I'm playing all sorts of great content here and I love to make helpful and educational videos to help others out. And I'm a big fan of controller support in games and I'd love to see Ready or Not have official controller support, but I truly believe this is the next best thing. To get started and download my controller support guide, all you have to do is go over here and it does say controllers are not supported with ready or not but if you click view controller settings you can find my ultimate ready or not controller layout uh, you can browse for this all you have to do is search for my ultimate ready or not controller layout right there and you'll have it i want to thank you for watching this video if you found it helpful or informative hit that like button subscribe to the channel ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos and just as a disclaimer here if the devs make any changes and makes it to where this controller layout does not work i'll do my best to try and fix it but please note that i am not liable for anything that the devs do that make changes to this stuff we definitely want official controller support to come in the future and this is something that will get you by until then so once again Thank you for watching. Take care, be safe, and we'll see you on the next one.